Do you wish that your dog could go from something like this to something like this? Or what about something like this? To something much better like this. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you the 10 steps that you need to follow to achieve exactly that. Step one is that we must remember to teach our dogs what it is that we do want when it comes to walking to heel, but not forgetting to help our dogs understand what it is that we don't want. We must have both pieces of the equation. If you only have one, you'll fail. To achieve the amazing levels of success that we've been able to achieve, you must have both sides of the equation. Teach your dog what you do want and what you don't want. Right in the middle. Yes. Close. Yes. Heel. Break. Good girl. Step two is that we must teach our dogs what it is that we do want from them. And we do that by teaching them a very basic heel command. You don't have to go super fancy, but we need to use a law, mark, and reinforce type system to help them understand that what we want by heel is to be on our left hand side. That's it, that's all we need them to understand. Once they understand that, well now we can start moving forward. Step three is choosing the right equipment. If your dog already walks beautifully to heel, you can use any combination of leads, collars, or harnesses. But if they don't already walk nicely to heel, then we have to choose the right piece of equipment. The one that I use by far the most, and my favorite tool, if there was only ever gonna be one tool I could use forever, it would be my trusty slip lead. That's exactly what I recommend you start using. Step four is to fit your equipment correctly. We want to make sure that it's fitting snug, high on the dog's head, just behind the ears. And the reason that this Fenrir slip lead is so good is having a stopper that helps keep it in place. Step five is understanding that these things took me years to learn and master. So you simply need to understand that it might take you longer than it can take me to get a dog walking beautifully, but it absolutely does not mean that you can't do it yourself. Now, if you're watching this, I know that you love dogs and you love training dogs and the world needs more dog trainers out there putting these steps into practice. So have you ever considered potentially becoming a dog trainer. I know a lot of people think that that's so overwhelming and where would you even start? So I created a completely free webinar masterclass on how you can start your journey to becoming a professional dog trainer just like me. Being able to work with dogs every single day, changing their lives, keeping them out of shelters and keeping them off the euthanasia table. That webinar is completely free of charge. There'll be a link down in the description box below if you want to go and check it out. Hopefully I'll see you over there because I love helping people pursue their passions and equipping and empowering them with the knowledge and confidence that you can do it too. Step six is the infamous tune-up drill. This drill is designed to help your dog understand that they must look up to you for guidance and direction. If we only ever show our dogs what it is that we do want from them, as soon as there's something that's more interesting, all of that fun obedience stuff goes out the window. We have to ensure that our dogs look up to us for guidance and direction no matter what's going around. And this tune-up drill is designed to achieve exactly that. For step seven, once we've taught our dog the obedience of heel, and we've also done a tune-up drill so that we now have them looking up to us for guidance and direction and an ability to communicate when they're doing something wrong, we have to remember to use our heel command first. We have have to always be setting our dog up for success, giving them a chance to win. And when they do win, when they do get it right, that we praise, we reward, and we reinforce that desirable behavior. So always give your dog the chance to succeed. Use your heel command first. Step number eight, and that is to not forget then to correct your dog when they ignore your heel command. You've put in all the hard work to let them know exactly what it is that you do want. You know they understand that you want them by our left hand side. So when they do something other than that, when they start to pull on a lead, we can use the pop with our slip lead that we tune them up with in the tune up drill just to remind them, hey buddy, that's not acceptable. Remember, I've asked you to walk nicely to heel. 
when you walk nicely to heel, good things are gonna happen. If you ignore me, I'm gonna have to challenge it. Step nine is to start in low distraction environments. Don't get carried away too soon. Start by working in your living room, then go out into your garden, then walk your dog in a lower distraction environment, and then start to build it up slowly. Remember, set your dog up for success. Set them up for easy wins so that we can reward and reinforce those wins as much as possible. Then when we hit that threshold where they start to make mistakes, we can correct and challenge those mistakes, but then help them work through it as positively as possible. And last but not least, step 10 is to subscribe to this channel where we've got tons of examples of much more detail of each step, and we'll see you next week.